Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves has just come out to very satisfying reviews. I managed to go and see it on Sunday and I think it represents something within cinema which is truly underappreciated. And this is gonna sound stupid but good films. Now I don't mean great films like The Godfather 2, Empire Strikes Back or Kung Fu Panda, I mean just perfectly good films. Films like Journey to the Center of the Earth, Bedazzled, Coach Carter, Transformers. Films that aren't bad or even really average, but they aren't anything too special either, just fun and enjoyable movies. This movie has, as of now, a 91% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes, 3.7 stars on Letterboxd, and everyone I personally know is giving it great reviews. But this to me doesn't signify the quality necessarily, but mostly signifies something everybody has been craving, which is just a good action adventure story that isn't trying to be anything but that. We get them every so often like Jungle Cruise, The Lost City, Jumanji, but the problem is that they're all so boring and average at best. At their worst, they're tedious and awful. But Dungeons and Dragons isn't that. Sure it's derivative and cliche, and sure it's a little bit childish and lacklustre in the emotional depth department, but it has one thing that these others simply can't seem to achieve at all. And that is genuine charisma and fun. This film is so fucking charming, it's unreal. A lot of this has to do with the cast. Like Michelle Rodriguez who plays Michelle Rodriguez, but it absolutely works because it's like this. Dungeons and Dragons as a board game is stupid. It is. It's silly. But that's not a dig at it. A lot of things we love are stupid. Star Wars as a franchise is stupid. And that's one of my favourite things ever. But a lot of the time that's what makes something so much fun, the tongue in cheek of it all, and that is especially present in D&D. The characters people create for D&D are super cheesy and dumb, but that's kind of the point. So Michelle Rodriguez playing the atypical strong female lead is welcomed rather than grunted at because that's exactly the kind of brutish character you would find in a game of D&D. Same with Chris Pine, he stupidly beguiling and magnetises the audience's eyes to the screen, whether he's in an action set piece or he's just doing a bit. He's just a dumb, silly character that we love to be with. Every character is like this, especially Hugh Grant who plays our villain who is wonderfully watchable. Assumedly taking notes from his character in Paddington 2 and this whole cast just strings together an undeniable chemistry which is what makes good films rewatchable. One of the strongest qualities a movie can have going for it is a cast that carries the dullness of the story. Movies like Mean Girls, Do Revenge, The Breakfast Club, The Ocean Movies, they're all carried by a great cast that's chemistry invites rewatches whereas typically seen as greater films like The Green Mile or Burning doesn't. Not to say they don't have a great cast because they quite obviously do, but what I'm saying is nobody watches The Green Mile over and over. But do you know what they do see over and over? Now you see me. Because we need films we can endlessly re-watch, and it's hard for those films to also be definably incredible because to be that, they need brilliant directing, intimate character work, emotional weight, flawless scripts and breathtaking performances, but these things are exhausting to experience in excess. So not saying a film has to be shallow to be rewatchable, but it's hard to have your cake and eat it too, and only a few films have managed to have it all. But casting and characters aren't everything, obviously. This film thrives on its action set pieces, which are way better than they need to be. The camera movement is dynamic, the choreography is smooth, and the settings in which most of these action set pieces are set are incredibly creative. This film takes entire advantage of the source material. Where adaptations often falter is that they don't take full advantage of the source material. This is something that, say, The Last of Us massively succeeds at, using the world the story is set in to craft more than is required, doing more than the bare minimum. This film uses so many aspects of D&D that every 10 minutes is exciting. You're being presented with a new place, item, character or animal or concept and it accumulates to a fulfilling time that goes by very quickly. The film boasts a 2 hour and 14 minute runtime that honestly feels like 1 hour 30. The pacing is phenomenal and no scene lingers any longer than it should. But there comes a problem with this. 
Dungeons and Dragons is a fantasy film, right? So by default, it's a lot like Lord of the Rings. It's difficult for a fantasy not to be like Lord of the Rings, especially if it wants to be any good at all. The world building is fantastic, but the problem is, there is so many locations and set pieces, none of them have time to breathe. None of these locations are ever going to become iconic or memorable because we go in and out of them every 10 or so minutes. But take something like Lord of the Rings. Every different location is wonderfully unique from the last and we spend a lot of time there so it has no choice but to become ingrained in your mind. Take the Mines of Moria or Helm's Deep. We visit a location here that has so much potential but we get one big action scene and we're out. No exploring, no real mapping of the location, no time dedicated to explaining it or its purpose. It's just there to be cool for a moment, which is fine. It services the story perfectly well, but it does reek of missed potential. It could have even been summarized in a bit of exposition. It wouldn't even be unusual for this film. There's tons of exposition and it works because that's just playing with the concept of a D&D movie. The game is built on exposition, so it just makes sense and comes off as being faithful rather than lazy. It's a win-win, but I know it's incredibly unfair to compare it to Lord of the Rings. It's almost inarguably the best fantasy media of all time film or TV wise. It's even considered one of the greatest trilogies, period. But because of that, it's also smart to study that and see what moves that made to make it great to begin with. I'd say it's obviously influenced at some parts, which I personally think it is, but also it is hard to distinguish what is Lord of the Rings influence and what is just fantasy genre stuff. So the best way to figure this kind of stuff out is the way this film relates to the source material overall, which it does pretty great. Like the way they make fun of the idea of magic fixing everything because that's the way it works in all other fantasy media which calls to a greater aspect of the film which is how it teases the source material whilst never looking down on it. It's very tongue in cheek with itself and a movie that is entirely self aware of its silliness is an absolute win. But it's not all a win. Regardless of all of those praises, the messages are still very heavy handed. The trailer fucking sucked, which I get isn't a problem of the film, but still. The emotional moments can be awkwardly placed. There's two villains when there really doesn't need to be. They could have just been one. And the second villain is dumb and unnecessary. There's a lot of plot convenience. The CGI can suck balls at times. The film still is one trope after another. But one great thing about this film being cliche is that it's predictable like seeing an old friend. But of course, the practical effects dwarf the CGI. There's some brilliant and beautiful costumes in this movie. There's some great horror moments that look straight from a Sam Raimi movie and the humour is sweetly broad and accessible. So it isn't perfect, but it is quite good. And that is perfectly okay. This is a film people will be re-watching for years and years because it will be so easy to do so. And that adds a lot of value in my opinion. And with that said, I'm going to give Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves a 6 out of 10 and I cannot wait to see it again. So have you seen this film? If so, let me know what you think of it. Let me know what you thought of this video. I read every single comment and reply to as many as possible. And whether it's this perfectly good film or not, as always, keep watching movies.